Hello, welcome back to part two of the Cityscape Depth Exploration. So, in the previous part, in part one, we learned how to create um, higher quality depth maps from a ground truth disparity. So here's an example of an image, it's segmentation and a ground truth disparity with with the, that was computed with the stereo SGBM algorithm. So from this, I'll scroll down to our some of our final results. We can compute a depth which is of low quality and we can smooth it and we can smooth it in painting. In paint it to get a better quality depth and given this that we actually cropped out the bottom 20%, some on the side, and some on the top in order to make sure everything's smooth. So this method actually has a lot of shortcomings, and there's a better way to do this. And I want to point out, let's go to the pipeline here. So here's the pipeline to compute depth from the original 16-bit um, disparity. So once we um, crop out the noise, the noisy areas we don't want, we do this impanning step. So this impanning step uses just uses an open CV function which uses C under the hood. But this is actually a huge bottleneck. And once we do that, we do these other steps right here just to really just makes it rescales it, gets everything nice, and then we compute the depth. But this overall function takes about ten to twelve seconds to run on a C my CPU, which is just a gaming laptop, but even if we do upgrade the hardware, it's still gonna present a bottleneck. So this leads to another way to compute the depth. And I do also want to reiterate, we are chopping out this information. So we aren't really using the, the given information to the fullest of our capability. So there, there is another way to compute a depth map and it involves something called knowledge distillation. So knowledge distillation and deep learning is where we have a very powerful teacher network and something called a student network. So when we create this information, we're actually gonna take the stereo pair of this image that was used to compute this disparity, we're gonna feed it into a model called Cree Stereo and create a high quality depth map. Now let's go over to this other notebook and see what that looks like. So here's the output of Cree Stereo and here are the two left and right stereo pair inputs. And see how good of a quality this depth is. We actually get the um, Mercedes Mercedes um, hood ornament here that you can really barely make out the original and we get this fine detail in this disparity map and from this disparity map we could actually predict a high quality depth map and we could actually do this faster than using this impainting step in the previous method. So I'm not going to go into the details of Cree Stereo. You can, we're going to use it as a black box today. I'm not 100% sure what it's doing, but I invite you to read the paper. It's a very complex algorithm, and it's the state of the art at this time for stereo stereo um, disparity prediction. So go to the top. I'm not going to run any of these cells, but we have a basic basic data loader here. All it does is just loads the left and the right stereo pairs from our data set and it returns the path since we're going to use this data loader to help create a new data set essentially with new folders with um, the predicted stereo depth and the predicted um, disparities. So we're not going to do any transforms other than place into a tensor and resize and we have some code to load the model right here. So we're going to set the max disparity to 256. That is totally arbitrary. You're encouraged to explore. So, all right. So, just some some things right here. Uh, my GPU, in order, we I decided to use full size images for this since I wanted as good of quality data as I can, and I'm not going to be doing this in real life in real time. I'm going to just store this, save this information to the disk. So. Yeah, my GPU couldn't handle more than a batch size of one. Um, this number of iterations is how many iterations to run the model. There's a recurrent network in there, so I believe that's how many how many times you'll iterate it through there. And we have the same baseline and focal length information to compute depth, the same as the previous video since we're still using the same data set. So here's a couple of tricks I actually found on a PyTorch. Um, tutorial 
to how to speed up the inference. This actually did make a big difference for me. Um, these two things together actually got inference from about 10 seconds to about five or six seconds once, once the GPU was warmed up. So just zeroing out all the gradients, and I think this was the key right here. So this finds the optimal backend for using convolution. It's just setting torch backend CUDNN benchmark. It does a benchmarking to see which, which is the best library for your hardware. So I strongly recommend that you set this anytime you're performing inference. So here's our inference function. We're going to want to transpose it and place it in contiguous memory, and then we convert it to a float32 tensor and place it on our device. I have it hard-coded to CUDA. And then we're gonna, gonna downsize this thing to get a first pass on here. So we predict the flow with our downsized image, and then we do another flow prediction with an initialized flow. And then we're able to get our predicted disparity between these two images using Cree Stereo. So we can take our training data set. So here's just an example. Here's an example pair right here. We've already seen this. We get high quality images. And essentially the pipeline here is going to be to create, we're going to first create all the folders that we need. And we're going to put the disparity and depth and the Cree Stereo depth in our main data set, which is denoted by root. And we're just going to iterate through all of these. Now, this takes a long time. So when I first did it, I just did it in pieces. I did um, val, train, and test all separately. Um, but really, we're just going to want to iterate through all, all the splits of it, go into each respective folder, get the data, create the folder, and then we're going to just save disparity and depth back to back to back. And this is basically it. So I could actually go in and find this data show you some examples of what we're working with so so here, depth is more interesting so let's go to the train I'm just gonna pick this one right here so you kind of see what it's working with now notice that these are very high even though we're looking at these in a grayscale that you can still kind of get a feel for what's going on here you can still get a very good sense for what's close and what's far away and this is a lot higher quality information for the model to actually do something like monocular stereo or monocular depth estimation. So, that being said, I hope this is helpful. I'll see you all in the next one.